Welcome to another sunny afternoon here in Stockholm. We're very nice outside. Here you see the Stockholm Royal Palace, of course, and the old town. And on this place here, we have the Royal Garden, Kungsträdgården. Kungsträdgården is a very nice garden. It was open for the royals only in the beginning of the 1600s. And from about the mid 1700s, it was open to the public. And over there we have the famous statue of Karl den Tolfte, Karl the Twelfth. He was a king in Sweden between 1697 and 1718 when he died in battle. And this statue was put up here in 1868 when it was exactly 150 years after his death. Look at that. Karl den Tolfte. Karl the Twelfth, he was a controversial king even in the, when he lived. Some people in Sweden were critical against him because he was constantly at war with Poland, with Russia, with Denmark. And even when this statue was put up here, it was a big street fight around here. It would happen in 1868 during the inauguration of the Karl and Tolf the statue was that private donators had paid for the statue and they of course wanted to get their money back so they sold tickets to different people but the poor people they wanted to see the statue of course it was a, it was a hero king and the first statue of Karl Tolf in Stockholm so when they realized that they would not be able to see the statue or the inauguration because they didn't have any tickets they became really really angry and this was the start of a big police and demonstrator uh, fight and these people were called thugs in those days but i, I don't know maybe we were just poor and frustrated that they couldn't see the karl and tolf the statue being inaugurated okay let's go on over there you can see Jakobs kyrka, the church of Jacob. And that was uh, opened in 1643. And here, over uh, there, between the trees over there, is the opera building. That opera building was built in the beginning of the 1900s. And here you can see the garden. The Stockholmers really like this Kungsträdgården, the King's Garden. And here, if you see the white hat, I will tell you a little bit more about that. That's a graduation hat from Sweden. When you graduate from high school here in Sweden, you buy one of these hats and you have a lot of celebration. But now because of the Corona thing going on here in Sweden, all these graduation ceremonies have been, you know, shut down. They are not being held anymore. So some people are, especially the young people, are very upset that they can't, you know, celebrate their graduation as much as they wanted to. Okay, now we come to this stage here. This is where uh, sometimes when there are big demonstrations or gatherings or big meetings, they are up on this stage here. I've seen Greta Thunberg, for instance. She's been holding a speech here. And over here, there's... Uh, Hello, hello. Are you a YouTuber? <laughs> they asked if I'm a YouTuber. Well, maybe soon. This is the king of Karl the 13th. He was a brother of Gustav the 3rd and he was became king in uh, 1809 when his nephew Gustav the 4th was uh, taken down from power. So this is Karl the 13th. And around Karl the 13th we have four lions. The lion is like a symbol of the nation of Sweden. Karl the 13th. He was not really really popular king. But uh, so I don't really understand why they have him as a statue here because I don't I can't really think of anything good that he did. <laughs> the good things that was when he was king he had the crown prince Karl who became Karl the Fjorton the Johan later and as a crown prince Karl the Fjorton the Johan did many many good things for Sweden. It was very important for Sweden. 
but Carl the 13th he didn't do so much at all actually he was mostly ill and old and some people today think that he had a dementia problem the lion is a symbol of Sweden it has been ever since the house of Bjelbo The house of Bjelbo, that's uh, the founder of Stockholm, Birre Jarl. He belonged to the house of Bjelbo as well as maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe five kings. Magnus Eriksson, King Birger. So the house of Bjelbo started this tradition with the lion as a state symbol for Sweden. Here you see the three crowns. One, two, three. The three crowns was used by Magnus Eriksson because he became king of Norway, Sweden and of Skåne. Skåne belonged to Denmark but some people sold Skåne to Magnus Eriksson the king, the Swedish and Norwegian king. And then he became king of Norway, Sweden and Skåne. And Magnus Eriksson was part of House of Bjelbo and in the coat of arms House of Bjelbo they had the lion, so that's why the lion has become a symbol for the state of Sweden. In the 1600s, Kungsgården was only for the royals. They had very unique plants here, maybe foreign plants from other countries. Today, of course, Kungsgården is open for everyone. Really, really nice. Let's see, can see it here. Kungsträdgården has been the place for many many street fights. Okay, we can start with 1868 it was a street fight because of the Karl and Tolf the statue over there I was telling you all about before. And in uh, 1971 people had gotten very very tired of all the raising of the buildings here in Stockholm. And at that time they were gonna build a subway system here in Kungsträdgården and take down all the trees here. So people were very upset and started to climb the trees and took ropes and chains for them so the police wouldn't be able to remove them. So that was a big street fight also. And also in the 1980s, mid, maybe like 1987, young people in August of the, every year was here and fighting and uh, they didn't have so much else to do so they were here making everything bad for all the decent citizens and also because of the Colin Tolfte the right-wing movement here in Sweden extreme right they had during that time beginning of the 90s they had Colin Tolfte as one of their symbols their uh, you know we love Colin Tolfte and then uh, because Colin Tolfte died on November 30th 1718 and because of that, the right wingers, they wanted to take flowers and put on on the statue. And the left wingers didn't want to let that happen. So then there was a big street fight between the left and the right and the police in the middle. And uh, very, very dramatic times. This fountain here is made by the same artist as the Colin Tolfte statue. His name was Moulin and he did this fountain first. Moulin's fountain, it says there. Moulin was an uh, artist who lived uh, between 1840 and 1873, it says. Look at this fountain, very beautiful. The first king who started uh, planting things here in the Kungsträdgården was a man called Eric of Pomerania. He was king from the end of the 1300s into the 1430s and uh, it says that he had some kind of gardening here because he didn't just like to be in the palace the old castle in Gamla Stan and he wanted a garden as well and so he started to have a garden here and then in the 1600s they were doing this garden as we can see it today but of course in those days it wasn't open to the public Well, thanks for watching and uh, now I'm gonna have a fika, which is a Swedish word for having a coffee. Bye-bye!